Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm on a roll today. This is video number five that I'm doing, but I rarely get to film. Today I'm kind of doing everything and I wanted to share some 2022 perfume releases that I had a chance to get my nose on. Some of them I have, some of them I've just sniffed and I'll let you know what's good and what's a flop. So there are quite a few flops for 2022, I'll tell you. And the ones that I have are on the tray beside me. The ones that I don't have, I have in my notes beside me. So we'll get through everything that I've smelled, including the new Tom Ford, Eben Fumé, and the new Chanel, all the things. I'm spilling all the tea, what's good and what's not. So here we go. Let's start with Erin Mediterranean Honeysuckle Mimosa. This one smells like honeysuckle, Mediterranean honeysuckle from Erin, but with a mimosa touch. So it's a little bit honeyed, it's sunnier, it's warmer, it, it is nice, but it's not as nice as the original. So this one is a good release. It is a limited edition, but I still prefer the original. The performance is so-so. So for people that, you know, are mindful of performance and don't want to spend the big bucks on a fragrance that doesn't last, um, this one doesn't last. It's a nice scent, but it doesn't last. So for lovers of mimosa, this is a, this is a great one, but no performance. No performance on the original one either, but the scent is stunning. Next, we have Ellis Brooklyn Sunfruit. This is a milky fig, kind of tropical beach vacation fragrance. Not a sunscreeny type of scent, more of a, just a milky, figgy, beautiful, sunny, sunny scent. I really like this one. This one is a huge success. I think they've done a fantastic job. Performance is decent for a clean fragrance. Look, I like to spray on clothing. I always spray on clothing. It makes the fragrance last. I really like this one. And I like to layer this with Myth. It smells really nice together. But yeah, for figgy, milky fragrance lovers, for somebody looking for a sunny vacation scent, like this fragrance smells like sunshine. It smells so good. It smells like you are going on a cruise. It actually smells a lot like the Angel Au Croisier, this one, the figgy one, but less intense. This one's very bold in your face and kind of obnoxious, even though very nice. This one's a little bit toned down and friendlier. So I would say this one is a success. Then we have When the Rain Stops from Maison Margiela. I have reviewed this fragrance. I will link that review up here. I was super, super excited about the scent. I love the name, but the scent was disappointing and you guys can check out the full review of it if you want because I'm kind of just skimming over it here. I will say this was a flop. It kind of just smelled like a clean men's fragrance, nothing groundbreaking, nothing too unique. It didn't wow me at all. It's been done and anything like aside from the name, it didn't do much for me at all. Let's move on to Magnolia Bliss from Juliet Has a Gun. This one has a nice nectarine opening. It has a nice citrus in the opening as well. Bergamot, ginger, and the opening is really, really nice. Like a juicy, beautiful nectarine, musky as well. Really, really pretty opening, but the dry down is just kind of a, almost like a sour floral scent. I didn't like the dry down, not on paper and not on my skin. It's just not good, honestly. It's just, the opening is pretty, the dry down is a disappointment. Also, very heavy on ambroxan. I find the ambroxan is sharp and it, it makes it more harsh and the florals kind of smell sour in the dry down. So yeah, I, I'm saying not good, like subjectively, obviously, but for me, this is a flop. The new release from Chanel, number one, Le Rouge. This one is a fragrance mist, so really just a glorified body spray. It's a musky rose scent. That's really all it is. There's red berries listed in here. It comes out a little bit citrusy. I'm not really impressed with this. And the performance is like the worst that I've probably smelled in a long time. Honestly, I want to say half an hour. Okay. If I'm saying an hour, that's very generous. It's about half an hour, maybe less. So for the price point, definitely not worth it. A dewy, fresh rose, it's been done. Muskiness, clean, soapy, fresh, but nothing unusual, not Chanel-like. I wouldn't smell this and say, oh, that's a Chanel. Like, it doesn't smell like the typical, sophisticated, elegant Chanel fragrances. It's a simple, dewy, musky rose, clean, soapy, whatever. Not really anything special, so I would say this is a flop. 
Next up is Flower Bomb Ruby Orchid. This beautiful bottle, it's like a little pink bomb. I love it. And the scent is really nice. It's amped up on vanilla. It's got that orchid note, but it's more of like a vanilla heavy flower bomb. If you guys miss Flower Bomb Extreme, this kind of reminds me of it. It's really nice. I, I really, really like this one. I think I might even like it a little bit more than the original Flower Bomb. There's, I don't know if there is no patchouli. I don't think there's patchouli listed in here. If there is, it's a lot more muted than the original Flower Bomb. And it's just a lot easier wearing and friendly. So I do like this one. Next up is Memo Flum. This one is a stunner. I love this one. I think that I think it technically came out in 2021, but it became available in 2022, at least where I live and on um, Twisted Lily, it became available. And this is just a divine jasmine scent. It's a little bit more citrusy than Alien, but a very Alien-esque jasmine. A lot more elegant and more refined. I did do a review on this when I talked about fragrances that you need to smell if you love Alien. I'll link that up here for you guys for a more in-depth review, but this one is a huge, huge, huge hit for me. I am obsessed with this fragrance. It's so stunning. It's so worth that hefty price tag. I just keep wanting to come back and smell this over and over again. It's not as obnoxious as Alien, even though I do love Alien. I acknowledge the fact that people find it obnoxious. This is this is friendlier, this is a lot more sophisticated. And if you did wanna check out anything on Twisted Lily, I believe my code is still active. I think it's the scented 10. I'll make sure to link everything in the description box for you. I know this is available there. Maybe it'll become available at discount retailers at some point, but because it's new, that's the only place that I know that it is available. Anyway, there is that 10% for you guys. Another fragrance from Twisted Lily that recently just came out is Peony Pop from Hermetica. Um, Okay, I have to be completely honest, even though this was sent to me, I don't love it. I'm gonna call it a flop and I'll tell you why. Even though it's a clean fragrance and the concept is good and it's for peony lovers, it has this, it has this fresh um, kind of natural smelling peony, but there is a sharpness here. There's a sharpness that is very prominent to me and I don't know if it's just me because I'm very picky with certain scents, I smell peony, raspberry, and honestly, it smells a lot like Delina if Delina were peony based. It really smells that way, but clean, like non-toxic, oil based, alcohol free, but the sharpness that's in here smells like alcohol. So for that reason, like if that wasn't there, I would love the scent, but that sharpness is overpowering to me. So unfortunately, I don't love it. So yeah, um, but if you do want to check it out, you can get 10% off at Twisted Lily. And Musk Noir Rose. Ah, this one is a beauty. This is a huge hit for me. I love, love, love this. This one just agrees with my skin. It's a plummy, tuberose. It's musky. It's mature, like grown up, but not outdated smelling. It has less of a retro vibe than the original Musk Noir Rose. I did a comparison of the two. I'll link that up here. And this one just... It just agrees with me more. I like that sweetness. It's it's not overpowering. It's just a little bit sweet. Very sexy, beautiful date night scent. I think they've done such a fantastic job. Narciso keeps coming out with hit after hit after hit, and I love that brand. Everything that they have just smells fantastic to me. So this one, also incredible, big hit. Okay, let's talk about a couple that I don't have that I have in my notes. So the new Valentino Donna born in roma coral fantasy these names keep getting more and more complex just on the name thing a flop <laughs> but not actually okay i smelled it i smelled it and it smelled to me just like a very generic not outstanding fruity scent incredibly safe i wouldn't say it's an offensive fragrance in any way it's just safe easy but it smells like something that I would find on the discount rack at a fragrance shop or at Shoppers Drug Mart on the $20 rack. Like if I picked that up for 20 bucks, I'd be happy. But it's just a friendly, like neither here nor there. I wore it on my skin. I fully sprayed myself and wore it one day and I was so underwhelmed. So that one is definitely a flop. I think that they're just like really just overdoing the whole flanker thing. And like you can't just keep coming up with more colors to add to the Valentino Donna Born in Roma lineup. Like come on anyway 
Uh, that one's a flop, so I wouldn't recommend it. It's also not very long lasting, so that's another thing. It, I didn't really even smell the kiwi. It just smelled like an obscure kind of fruity floral, so unfortunately a nay for me. Another nay is the new Tom Ford Ebene Fumé. Unfortunately, not a vibe. I was hoping it would be another killer woody scent like Oud Wood, like a good woody men's scent. I was hoping for something like that but it has a synthetic feel to it. It has this sort of sharp synthetic harshness that just doesn't go away. And it's supposed to have a note of Palo Santo, which is a sweet smelling wood. If you guys are into the whole crystal and home cleansing thing and burning sage and that kind of thing, like I'm into that. So I burn Palo Santo sometimes and that wood has a very nice sweet smoky smell. So that's what I was expecting out of Ben Fumé, but it's not there. It's just kind of a, just a dry, sharp woodiness and I'm not impressed. So that one was a flop for sure. If it had been like a proper Palo Santo scent, that would have been beautiful, but unfortunately not. And finally, we have Nest's Golden Nectar. This one I smelled and it smelled like a beautiful lipsticky scent. I did not expect it to smell this way. It reminded me a lot of Lipstick On from Maison Margiela, which is discontinued. I have a bottle and I was savoring it because there is like no other way to get it now it's gone. But this Golden Nectar not only is Nest Clean, which I really love, this Golden Nectar really smelled like a beautiful, sophisticated, lipsticky scent reminiscent of Lipstick On. So that one is a hit. So we're ending on a good note today. That one I loved and I might be picking up a full bottle soon. And let me know your opinions on the new 2022 releases. What do you guys think has been a hit and what has been a flop? What are your thoughts on the new Chanel? I would really love to hear your thoughts on the new Chanel in particular. Um, let me know. And that's it for today. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.